Happy Wednesday, friends. You made it to the middle of the week. Can you believe it? You, you Maybe you thought on Monday, am I going to make it to Wednesday? Great news. You did. You're still here. God's still working. He has a plan. Don't get discouraged. <laughs> We're going through the book of 2 Timothy here on these Daily Walk devotions. If you're encouraged by these, hey, share them with somebody else. Maybe send a link to a friend and say, hey, you might want to check this out. And maybe you'll be encouraged. Start your day off with the Word of God. Now, here we are in this final letter written by the Apostle Paul. And we pick up today in the second chapter in the 20th verse. And in the context, Paul has been talking about those in the church. There were some false teachers that Timothy was having to contend with. And the way that he was able to combat the false teaching was to rightly divide the word of truth, stick to the word of God, don't get sidetracked, don't listen to that, stay away from that. As long as he did that, then, then he was good and the church would be good as well. But then Paul gives us a really an illustration, and he uses, interestingly, a household utensils. And he does a comparison in the house of God. Listen to what he says in verse 20. But in a great house... He's picturing a house here. There are not only vessels of gold and silver, but there are also vessels of wood and clay, some for honor, some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he'll be a vessel for honor, sanctified, useful for the master, and prepared for every good work. Here Paul makes a contrast, uses a metaphor of vessels that are good and vessels that are not good, vessels of honor and also vessels um, that are not as honorable. And I suppose the question would be, what kind of vessel do you want to be? You know, because we're all a vessel. You know, the Bible says that uh, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We are earthen vessels. Did you know that the same elements that make up your body uh, make up the dirt outside? That might put some things into perspective. <laughs> I mean, when, dust to dust, the Bible says. We're not as, you know, we're not as great as we think we are. But here Paul's saying, listen, you can be a vessel for honor, a vessel that God can pour into and fill and overflow so that you could be poured out, a vessel for honor. How, how can you be a vessel for honor? Well, Paul says here that there needs to be a sanctifying, that is a set apart, a cleansing that will take place. Cleansing himself from the latter can be a vessel for honor, sanctified, set apart, and useful for the master, and then prepared. Sanctified, useful, prepared for every good work. That should be the desire of every believer. I, I know for me, just as a Christian, I wanna be a vessel for honor. And sometimes as a vessel, we can be filled with all kinds of things that hinder us from being filled by the things of the Lord. You know, we, we fill up our vessel with, with all kinds of distracting things. And let's face it, there are so many things out there to fill up on. They don't really satisfy, they, they don't really help us. I mean, not all things are, are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. What, what are you full of today? I hope that you're full of the Spirit, that you're full of the Word of God, that you're a vessel that is cleansed on the inside so that you can be filled and then you can be poured out and refilled, and that should be the desire, to be a vessel for honor. Paul goes on to say in verse 22, again, these are, these are important exhortations for Timothy. This is Paul's final words to him. He says, flee youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with all who call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. Paul tells Timothy here in 2 Timothy 2, 2, 2. We used to say this. I used to disciple a bunch of young men uh, when uh, back uh, many years ago now. I'm still discipling guys, but, but there's a group of young men. I remember telling them this particular passage. I said, if you ever get in trouble or you're caught up in lust, just remember to dial 2 Timothy 2 2 2 2. That's 2 Timothy 2 2 2. <laughs> and, that, and what is that exhortation? It's the exhortation to run from those things that you need to run from and then run after or pursue the things that God wants you to run after. You, you, can't, you can't run after the things of the flesh and run after the things of God. You, you have to decide what, what track you're going to run on, what lane you're going to run in. And for many of us, you know, we spend a lot of time running after the things of the flesh, chasing them down, pursuing them. But they leave you empty. They bring you into bondage. They, they don't satisfy. 
They hinder the work of the Spirit in your life. And so Paul says, listen, run from those things. Can you think of some examples of people in Scripture who ran from the lust of the flesh? One that comes to mind is a man by the name of Joseph. You remember Joseph, don't you? He was one of the brothers that was given a beautiful coat. And his brothers, because of the coat he was given, they despised him. They, they threw him into a pit. They sold him into slavery. He ended up in a man by the name of Potiphar's house. And Potiphar had a wife that was sweet on Joseph and would pursue him every day. But do you know what it said concerning Joseph when she came and tempted him? That he repeatedly denied her and said, I can't do this sin against God. And when it came right down to it, when she set him up and he was given the opportunity to sin where nobody else would have seen, but God would have seen, you know what he did? He ran. He fled. And as a result, uh, of course, she lied about him and he ended up in prison. But God eventually raised him to up to be the second most powerful ruler in the known world next to Pharaoh. But guys, listen, there, there's, there's an important uh, reference here, and that is, listen, there's things that we need to run from. There's things that you need to run away from. You have no business as a child of God. It's, it's coming for you. Run from it. Run from it and run after. Pursue the things that lead to righteousness. Who do I run with? That is also important because Paul tells Timothy, you need to run with those people. Notice this. Run with those people who are also pursuing the things of the Lord. Pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. Who do you surround yourself with? Who do you run with? Depending on who you run with affects your life. The, the people who are your influences, the people who you call your best friends, do they draw you closer to Jesus or do they pull you away from Jesus? That girlfriend that you're dating right now that you say, oh, she's everything to me. I just love her so much and she's amazing. Does she draw you to Jesus? Is she a Christian? Well, she's really nice. I didn't ask, I didn't ask that. Is she a believer? If she's not, you're running in the wrong direction. Ladies, listen, are you dating some guy that's not a Christian? Oh, but he's, so, he's a lot better than Christian guys. I can't find any good Christian guys. And, you know, I hear that from time to time. Are, are, you, are you with the right man? Are you living in sin? Are you pursuing these things? Are you running in that direction? Listen, time to, time to turn around. Time to run from those things that could destroy you and run after those things that God wants to bless you with, with faith and peace and love and hope. But I'll tell you this. If you're running in the wrong direction, it is going to be impossible for you to run in the right direction. You can't run in both directions at the same time. And for some of you probably watching today on this Wednesday, you're gonna to need to change your course. But I can tell you this, you'll never regret it. You get on the right path, the right track, you start pursuing the things of the Lord, man, God's gonna bless. And until you decide to get on that right path, you're missing out. And listen, friend, you don't want to miss out on anything good that God wants to do in your life. Keep that in mind as you go into this Wednesday. God bless you. See you next time.